I'm thinking that's him. Right there, I can't be sure. I think it is. But this is this is identified in the Library of Congress as battery M. Uh, and this is the whole uh, uh, battery. One, two, three, four, five, six guns. So uh, six guns, three sections, uh, three sections. And there's a, a, a lieutenant there and a lieutenant here and a lieutenant there. Um, so he was with them on the peninsula. He would transfer to the topographical engineer. I mean, sorry, he, he received a brevet promotion, so just a brevet, the captain, uh, uh, the dated uh, 527-62. That was for meritorious service at Hanover Court. And then he transferred to the topographical engineers July 24th, 1862. But he, he didn't report for duty uh, to that because at Antietam, he was in command of Battery M. Um, the commander, the, Jim tells me the commander of Battery M was wounded at Malvern Hill. Is that correct? Uh, he was killed at Malvern Hill. Oh, killed, killed at Malvern, Malvern Hill. So see, it's, it's still Lieutenant Peter C. Haynes, so he hasn't re received a promotion or anything. He's acting in, in command of this battery at uh, Antietam, but uh, officially he's in topographical engineer. <coughs> Artillery is a funny thing when you're trying to figure out where guys are because they're just assigned in their records to uh, a battery, but not, I mean, actually a, um, a regiment of, of uh, so you'll see Haynes assigned to the 2nd U.S. Artillery, but it doesn't say he was assigned to Battery M in the 2nd U.S. Artillery. It's very hard to find those records. Uh, not very hard, but it's a little harder than when somebody's assigned to a regiment. Um, so anyway, at, uh, at Antietam, he was in command of this battery, and they were by the middle bridge. So how many people here have been to uh, Antietam? All right. So you know when you come from Keatysville and you cut across the middle bridge, which is the, the one of the three bridges that is not the original Washington County Stone Bridge, and you start heading up the hill towards the cemetery, and you pass that god-awful statue of Elias where it doesn't belong. And, and then on your right hand side you'll see a series of tablets and that's where this one is okay so he was uh, that's that's where his battery was and you can find actually a, he gave a little drawing to uh, uh, Ezra Carmen uh, showing where his, his position was uh, there along the road I think they were uh, straddling the road and uh, during the day there they lost uh, three men although we know absolutely nothing happened there because Stephen Sears says so Absolutely nothing happened. Uh, so they were there until they were relieved by another battery, and then they came back again. And so there was there was stuff going on there uh, that uh, you don't always hear about, but it's sitting right there on the battlefield. If, if you would uh, write a book and actually visit the battlefield, you would see that kind of stuff. Um, so there he was at Antietam. And then he disappears from the uh, Eastern Theater. He received a, uh, um, I'm sorry, he, went, he, he transferred to the Corps of Engineers from topographical engineers on 3 3 of 63. And on 6 18, thir, uh, 6 18 63, he was promoted to captain. He received a brevet promotion to major on July 4th, 1863, which was the fall of Vicksburg, because there he was at Vicksburg. Uh, he was the uh, engineer, chief engineer for the 13th Corps there, because the regular chief engineer of the 13th Corps was sick. And you can't see it here, I apologize for the quality of that photograph, but uh, um, his, his, his rank here is lieutenant. You very rarely see uh, monuments like that to lieutenants. Okay, although he was a, uh, a brevet captain. On 6 63 he was promoted to captain. So there he is, a real captain. Um, received his uh, uh, promotion to major. Uh, and in 1864, he served as chief engineer of the Department of the Gulf. And um, this is one of the maps he made. But Jim Morgan brought this map here in, which is a, a map of his family plantation down there in, in Louisiana. 
and it was drawn by Peter Haynes. Wow. See that? Is it okay to pass that around, Jim? Yeah. And that this has been the news of you with all the flooding and everything down in, in Mississippi, they refer to the Morganza spillway. Have you heard that? That's his fault. It's an act of Jim down there. Okay, so after the war, war's over. He, uh, on 3-13 of 65, he received a verbal promotion to lieutenant colonel for his meritorious uh, war service, but he's a captain. Okay, and as you know, after the war, most of those guys reverted to their regular rank. Uh, one of the more famous ones is George Armstrong Custer, the class of the Haines, who uh, was a major general and, and reduced in rank, I believe, to lieutenant colonel. Although a lot of these guys with the with the, the private ranks uh, that had achieved them during the Civil War, they would be referred to as their private rank, so they would still refer to Custer as General Custer. Um, but after the war, he uh, was promoted to major in uh, September of 70, lieutenant colonel in 1886, and colonel in 1895. During that period, he worked on a lot of assignments, and one of them was uh, harbor improvement and lighthouses. For five years, he was the engineer secretary of the uh, lighthouse commission, or lighthouse board, sorry. Um, does anybody recognize that lighthouse? I'd be really surprised if anybody does. Anybody see the movie Glory? Anybody know where that Battery Wagner was? Charleston, Wilmington. Charleston, South Carolina, on a place called Morris Island. And this is the Morris Island Lighthouse. It is now completely surrounded by water. But uh, the reason I put it in there, I can see it from my brother's back porch on James Island. Uh, and I, I actually have years ago climbed to the top of that when it was, it was still accessible. Uh, but that was one of the ones he built in. And you know why he wound up on the lighthouse board, of course he was an engineer, but maybe there's more to it than that, and we'll get to that a little later too. In uh, 1890, <coughs> he built something that today we know as what? It's the George Washington Parkway, which at the time was called the National Road and only ran from Aqueduct Bridge, which is uh, the Key Bridge, I think, today, yeah, the key uh, down to uh, uh, Mount Vernon. And it's now called the, the, the uh, George Washington Parkway. This is very interesting given this talk in Washington, D.C. last week because those guys know everything about Washington, D.C. Uh, and they didn't know any of this stuff. So, yeah, he built this road. And he had to testify before Congress as to why uh, they should fund this. He says, it, the road, is to commemorate the virtues of the grandest character in American history. It should have the character of a monumental structure, such as would comport with the dignity of this great nation in such an undertaking, and the grandeur of character of the man to whom it is dedicated. So the intention was to uh, call it the George Washington Park, even though know, they were calling it the National Road there for a little while. And I, I thought that was kind of confusing, because in that Route 40? Route 40 got the National Road, yeah. Okay. Um, so he did a lot of stuff. But he wasn't done with the George Washington Parkway. Because uh, sitting right across the George Washington Parkway is this, this, this bit of junk right here. Oh my gosh, that is. Okay. <laughs> this is the Washington Monument right there. Okay. So this is the. Uh, what? Mall. The mall. We'll the, mall. the mall, as they say in New York. This is the mall. What's that? Tidal Basin. Cherry Blossom. He built Tidal Basin. Uh, what the Tidal Basin did is it affected the reclamation of the Potomac Flats. It resulted in the conversion of this foul smelling, swampy 650 acres into Potomac Park. Um, during the war, and actually before the war, before this project, in the summertime, what did everybody in Washington do? Yeah. Uh, left. Where'd, the, where'd, where'd Lincoln go? It's old or something, right? Because this this mall here at one time was a what? Store. 
a canal, kind of, with all kinds of dead pigs and horses and stuff floating in it. And, and this was a swampy area, and it stunk to the Jesus. Um, so the building of this pool here allowed for, um, it, it didn't create this land here, but it allowed it to be used. Uh, so we have all this here, and who can we thank for that? Well, there are a lot of engineers working on the project, right? And the Army doesn't really care who does it. Except in this case, because this is Baton Park. What's that? That's Haynes Point. The Army actually named that Haynes Point after Haynes. Can you think of any other project that they did around back in this time? You can think of, I'm sure there may be others, that were named for the engineer that did is it. Is it the Meeks Capital Dome? Although Franklin had something to do with it too. Although some people do refer to as the uh, to refer to the, the pension building as the Meeks Pension Building, pension building, don't they? Or is it Meeks? How do you say that? Uh, the U.S. Pension Building. Ever seen right. it? The, the, it's the building, uh, museum. building museum. When I went down there last week, it was closed for a private function. <laughs> but the outside is pretty cool too. So that's Haynes Point. And until recently, they had a whole bunch of wacky. Uh, arms and hands and stuff, but they took them out and moved them somewhere, apparently. They walked away on their own. <laughs> yeah, the guy got up and left. They took it when you flew over, it was really cool. But. So there it is, Haynes Point. That's it. And then over here it says, and that parkway is a beautiful drive, isn't it? Yes. It's really neat. I wish I had been there in the fall because, you know, the, the trees block a lot of the view. Um, so again, he's still not done. Because in the Spanish-American War, he was commissioned a Brigadier General U.S. Volunteers, served in Puerto Rico as a brigade commander in John Rutter Brooks' division. Anybody know who John Rutter Brooks is? If I combine it with uh, Kelly Cross, Brook, and Zulp, does it sound more familiar to you? Kelly's Right, the wheat field. That's Caldwell's? Caldwell's Brigade? Uh, sorry, Division. Caldwell's division, uh, Kelly Cross, Brook and Zook. Uh, that's the brook from there. There he is. And actually, Haynes was down here. This uh, guy, Yarna, and uh, Aguirre, I think that is. This uh, what he did. I mean, actually, not, not that one. It's Arroyo, I think. Uh, he, he was responsible for the, uh, securing these uh, uh, seaside ports here. This is Puerto Rico, of course. And the uh, Corps Commander here, anybody know who it was? Nelson Mott. Nelson Mott. So Joe Wheeler wasn't the only Confederate, uh, wasn't the only uh, Civil War general to come out of retirement or whatever, although Nelson Mott was not retired and neither was Haynes. Uh, but, but there were a lot of uh, Civil War uh, personalities that were around, including, I believe, Merritt. Was not Merritt in command of all the infantry in the, Philippine, in, in the uh, Philippines? Or the, was he in control of, of all the infantry in the Pacific? MacArthur? Well, or was it MacArthur? No, MacArthur was in charge for a while in the Philippines. Well, I know Merritt was in the Philippines, too. So, I mean, there could have been more than one at, at any given time. But he was there and in command of a brigade. So you think that's a pretty good career, but he's not done yet. Because the president asked him to uh, work on a on a project uh, in the uh, 1900s, and that included uh, um, Teddy Roosevelt as one of them. See these guys, what are they doing? Anybody know what they're doing? It looks like they're digging a ditch, but they're not. They're digging the dirt, and they're leaving a ditch. What they're actually doing there. <laughs> 